Hello, everyone, and I want to welcome you to another episode of the Better the Pond podcast, where we talk to amazing people doing incredible things that lead the charge of generosity. My name is Warren Berry, and I'm your host and the founder of Instinctive Solutions, where we believe that everyone is an odd duck, but that's what makes them awesome. Today, our guest is Verna O'Neill. Know your value. Be kind to others, a true-to-her-roots prairie girl who discovered her dream job at a very young age. Vern has always had a passion for helping entrepreneurs and local businesses. Learning from her immigrant father, she saw firsthand what hard work, innovation, and determination can do to grow a community. Verna has the superpower of empathy, really, truly caring and seeking to understand the needs of others in order to help them be successful. She does this every day at Community Future Sunrise to help businesses and her community grow. Let's have a listen to what Verna and her team is doing to better the pond. Ladies and gentlemen, Verna O'Neill. Verna O'Neill, I want to thank you ever so much for taking the time out. I know it's late in the day, but I do want to thank you for taking time out of your busy life to be a guest on the Better the Pond podcast. It is wonderful to have you. Oh, I am just floored that I get to be here in the middle of the pond with you, Warren. Let's splash around. Let's make, let's, let's create ripples. Okay. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Okay. I'm not a good swimmer. <laughs> All this water talk. Just let you know. Okay. That's my backstory. Just, just dog paddles only. Dog, dog paddle only. Okay. <laughs> we'll play it safe. We'll keep you, we'll keep you close to shore. So um, before, but before we get into the actual questions I had for you, um, because later on, we're going to showcase everything that you're doing to better the pond. But before we get into that, can you just, you know, obviously you're working for Community Future Sunrise and, and my audience might be a little bit, you know, confused of what that is. So I'm going to leave it up to your very capable hands to give just kind of a nice glossy overview of Community Future Sunrise, where you're located and kind of what you do. Oh, great. Yeah, I can absolutely do that. So the Community Future Program is a business and economic development program that's partially funded by the Canadian federal government. And um, we span the entire nation in all rural areas. So the Community Futures isn't in urban centers, cities, but we're in uh, rural Saskatchewan, rural coast to coast. And so our big claim to fame is we help entrepreneurs to start or expand a business. We help communities um, to ready themselves for their businesses to grow or be retained. And um, we do that through lending services. We have advisory services. We do business coaching training and helping entrepreneurs um, do what they need to to succeed. So you're kind of the, you know, you're kind of the backbone or the support for small businesses in, in rural Saskatchewan. Oh, you said it better than me. Can <laughs> I do backsies? Can I take it back? No, no. We're, we're, what we're, he adding, said? we're adding to that. Oh, we're so. adding. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, every community features is a, maybe a little bit different. We have the same core services, but we're governed by a board of volunteer directors from within our regions. And we really target the needs of the businesses. So some community future that is in Southeast Saskatchewan, where I am, uh, might operate slightly differently than a community futures that is in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. where, where are you? I, I know where you are, but my audience doesn't know where right. you are. Yeah. So first Saskatchewan, let's start province of Saskatchewan, then Southeast corner of Saskatchewan. And I live in Weyburn, Saskatchewan, which is kind of in the middle of the southeast corner of Saskatchewan. And population? Around 11,000. Of, of the whopping 11,000 mm -hmm. people in Weyburn, Saskatchewan. And yes, and, um, yes I know uh, quite a few people from out in that area. and They're wonderful people. And yeah, just it's really, well, the rural Saskatchewan people, they're just like, they're just down home, um, easy to get along with, lots of fun, rider fans. Just, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, you know, I want to say, I mean, lots of claims to fame for a lot of our communities down here, but Weyburn, I think, made the best city, best city to live in Canada, one of those top 10 lists. I'm going to have to Google it, but it was, uh, we, were we were pretty infamous. 
absolutely one of the best cities in Canada to live, Weyburn, yeah. Saskatchewan. That yeah. you should be rather proud. Well, I am. <laughs> I absolutely am. Well, Every well, community in our region is fantastic, but that was one that um, I think that the city of Weyburn was able to do a little bit of leverage with. So that was pretty amazing. That is amazing. And one of the things I just want to mention, just to sort of really, you know, one of the reasons you're here is just to showcase what you're doing for the community. Uh, what are you doing to better the pond? But it's interesting, you know, if you look at all the, the business people, who entrepreneurs, especially when they go in, they have an idea, they want to start their business. Um, so they have an idea, they've got, they want to go and they want to find a location, they want to actually get a business up and running. But if you think about after all that, even going to school, they got somewhat of an education, who teaches them how to operate a business? Oh, boy, you know, entrepreneurs are quite an amazing bunch because they um, they seek out that information a lot of times like they intuitively know that there are parts of what they do in their business that they are rock stars at. They know how to, if it's a welding business, they know how to be a welder. They mm -hmm. you know they've, they've done all of that research, but they, they also realize that there are lots of different parts of a business that they need to learn about. So we do have a lot of people who reach out to us to ask, how, what are the startup steps? I, there's a lot of legalities. I'm not really sure what to do first. I don't want um, this, you know, to start on the wrong foot. So what are some of the things I need to know? How do I plan a business? What are some of the different key pillars of a business that I need to be aware of? And so we kind of, as a Community Futures, and we have lots of sister organizations within Canada as well, but Community Futures, that's our, that's what we do. We help those small business owners to uh, map out their steps, uh, to find the financing that they need, to continually uh, add value to themselves as managers so they can grow themselves, grow their operations, grow their uh, staff, their teammates. It's, uh, it's a pretty great organization. So in answer to that question about huh, where do they go to school in order to learn how to be an entrepreneur? School of life. <laughs> well, that's exactly it, right? So someone's going to, let's say you, you use the example of a well, you know, somebody's a welder or um, let's say they went, they went to school for hair and aesthetics or they, right? All those different businesses are in, in, in rural Saskatchewan. And, but no one really ever teaches them actually how, to, how do you start a business? What are your startup costs? What do you need from the bank? How do you, what are the legalities? What do you, or how do you even set up a business? How do you get a business name? How do you, all those things that, that no one ever teaches them. And then, you know, what is wonderful is that you're there for that support system so that those entrepreneurs can go and actually launch a business, become successful, which in turn supports, you know, just supports back into the community. See, you're creating. Absolutely. It. And we, we do, we make ripples every day. It, and it's, uh, again, I think you're, we're all in this kind of field of helping because we do realize that there are people who have great skills in what it is that they know how to do and they just need that little extra coach or that uh, piece of the financing puzzle to get them to the next level and so that's that's I think the piece of the pie that we um, we serve up right like we're, we're a part of that team uh, that they can come back to and and receive continually co uh, continued coaching from throughout their entire journey as an entrepreneur because there's there's a lot of different phases of entrepreneurship and we're kind of here for all of it and you were, we were just talking recently, I think within the last couple of weeks, so there's also in the, um, in the data communications. So whether it's website development and, mm -hmm. and branding and marketing and that whole piece as well, which you guys have actually sort of gone into that, into that world to help organizations. You can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> I'm the old this, dog. This is proof. Um, this is proof. But, you know, again, our community futures took a step back and really looked at what does our region need? Um, and even prior to the pandemic, we were hearing from our entrepreneurs that they would love to expand their sales. They'd love to reach more customers. Mm, they weren't online. Mm. They weren't really posed, poised to um, take advantage of e-commerce or even have um, clients find them and reach out online to, with them. So we um, developed a great program, it's called Go Digital Sask, uh, that helps entrepreneurs do that, helps them have an enhanced digital presence, connect with customers online. And uh, we have a great team of five individuals right now that are working on that project for our 
region, our entrepreneurs in our region, um, to help those entrepreneurs um, attain that goal that they had, higher, increase the sales by having an online presence. So there you go. And so always now, looking and, to innovate. Yeah. And this, this is actually, you're jumping ahead because this is what you're doing to better the pond. So oh, in saying that's okay. It's, it's all, <clears throat> this is all, this is an all inclusive podcast. Oh, we can jump anywhere we want. We can, right? I, I, just follow the bouncy ball. Sounds great. <laughs> all right. So here is my first question. So we're going to go into all about you, Vernon, Vernon, yeah. all right. So you know, what got you from being a gosling? And I'm talking like going right back to your beginning days, right? Got you back from being a gosling to leaving the nest, right? Time to leave home, right? You're going to get the push out of the nest, right? To where you are today, Verna O'Neill, what is your backstory? <laughs> oh, boy. You know, I am a Saskatchewan girl. Um, Born and raised in North Battle. Well, not born in North Battle, but raised in North Battleford, Saskatchewan. Born where? Where we're, we're going way back? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Thompson, Manitoba. Oh, so you're a Mani so you're a Manitoba girl first. I was, yes. And then came to the never. Mind. I won't yeah. say what side. I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> then came to the Saskatchewan side. Yeah. Let's just say that. Yeah. Um, and and you know I. My parents had an acreage just outside of the Battlefords. My dad um, was an immigrant, actually. He came from the Netherlands when he was 18 years old. Um, he loves to tell the story that he had $42 in his pocket and he couldn't speak English. And, uh, but he was a journeyman electrician at 18 and learned English, um, got his journeyman's license here in Canada and uh, met my mom in um, Thompson, Manitoba area. And uh, she was a teacher, dedicated, just a hardworking individual, um, nurturer. And so between the two of them, we relocated, I guess, eventually to the to the Balfords area. And we lived on this acreage where, um, you know, my sister and myself learned so much about um, hard work, nature, doing a great job, pitching in. And, um, and a lot about finances as well, because, uh, you know, as a daughter of an immigrant, pennies mattered, right? Mm. So, so, so that was uh, my growing up years. And then um, always was a fan of numbers, loved the numbers game. So I went to university and uh, I got a finance degree from the College of Commerce in uh, Saskatoon at the university. And so were you around that like eight, 17, 18 years old from mm -hmm. the Battlefords, decided yes. I'm going to leave the nest. Yeah. Head off to the big city of Saskatoon. Oh, that, that road was paved for me because I had an older sister. Ah. So I was a little lucky in that regard. So I did follow in her footsteps. Um, she went into the College of Commerce. So, hey, I think I'll try that out too. That worked out pretty good for her. And uh yeah, and so that was a great experience. I had the university experience where, again, not a lot of students these days are having that same on-campus experience, living away from home. So I do feel very fortunate uh, in comparison to maybe what students are experiencing right now. And um, I remember when I graduated from, high, from university, I said to my sister, I don't think I know anything. I don't think I know much of anything. Who is going to hire me? Like, they'd be fools. They'd be fools to hire me. And my sister said, don't you worry. Someone will hire you. And uh, my very first real big girl job at a university was working for what became a community futures office. So, wow. uh, yeah, so I was really fortunate. So I, I started working with business development right out of university. So that was a really fortunate landing for me in a great pond where there were lots of ripples, lots to learn. And uh, I felt like I won the lottery with that. All right, so I'm gonna take you back just a little bit. I'm gonna get a little personal here. So, because I grew up in Saskatoon as well. Um, I did not go to U of S, but I grew up in, in uh, but I was, went to high school there and a couple of years after. So where, where was like the bar scene in Saskatoon? Mm -hmm. because, because I can tell, I got you got that look in your eye that, you know, back in your back, you leave the nest, right? You, immigrant family at home. You finally get out in the big city. 
college life where'd you go gotta, gotta tell ya met my husband at the sutherland bar at the southern we do i was just talking about the sutherland bar just the other day did oh. you know that the sutherland bar does not exist anymore i did know that i did know that it was a uh, few years ago i think yeah 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 so good memories from there for sure <laughs> or or some good memories from there <laughs> for what you can remember <laughs> <laughs> you met your husband at the Sutherland bar yeah yeah and absolutely I saw that young man across the crowded room and I said gotta snap up that guy fast as I can so and, and apparently he thought it was a good idea as well he went along with the idea I suppose yeah, yeah. Okay. not a bad deal not hopefully a bad deal. <laughs> All right, so so uh, the, so there you go. See, so your sister went to commerce. Your you followed her in her footsteps. Here you are at the Sutherland Bar, gazing across a crowded room to meet the love of your life, and you just got a dream job, which is basically what is now a community futures group. So you won the you have won the lottery. Does this story get any better than this? Now when I'm saying my story, I just feel like, wow, they could make a TV movie about this, honestly. I'm already on. Oh, does there have to be a downside, though? Where's the, isn't there usually something that gets thrown in and then there's a trauma involved? And Oh, there, there has to be, or something, oh. you know, or there's, there, there has to be somebody evil or, you know, like, you know, the, the, some opposition of some sort has to come into play. Yes, that's true. Story line. Is, there, is there one? I don't know. Let's keep on with the story. Maybe okay. there's something we can make up. I don't know. <laughs> so your dream job, actually, so I'll just take this back a little bit. So um, before you got your dream job, what other jobs did you work other jobs when you're either in high school or in, in college when you're in university? Yeah, for sure. Retail. So customer service. I think a lot of us have had that experience. Um, I also worked at an insurance agency that did motor license issuing, lots of customer service with that, lots to know because it wasn't computerized at the time. Mm. So there was a lot of information you had to know. So um, it was a real challenging, great job. And um, again, really pushed me to, I think, advance my skills, talk with people um, mm -hmm. as a young person, you can't really overlook that that's a that's a great experience for young people to kind of be interacting with public and, and maybe having some conflict and having some things that they don't know the answers to and then how do you how do you solve those problems so so those were really fantastic even though at the time maybe they seem like really challenging jobs but when i look back i i feel like some of those challenging jobs are the are the best um experiences you can have so maybe that was the obstacle. Was that it in my storyline? That, that, that could have been uh, the obstacle in your storyline. Okay. <laughs> did you ever work in the uh, in the restaurant industry at all? In your... I never did. No. That's uh, it, it's a great. It, you just learn so many skills coming out of the restaurant industry, and um, and it's just very typical, of course, for being in university and get a job at the restaurants and whatnot. So. But you didn't go down that path. No, I didn't. No. So, so, um, so lots of uh, so lots of retail customer service, your motor license issuer, whatnot. You're doing all that, and then you got your dream job, right? And so, can kind of bring me almost up to speed from you know, okay, so where you know here you are, you're still in Saskatoon, and you got that job. I presume, am I am I presuming that correctly? When you got your, I I actually got that job. Um back in the Battlefords area. Oh, you went back to your roots. Went back to the roots. Uh -huh. Aha. Had an in, must have been a Battlefords girl. And they're <laughs> like, all day long, she's gonna work out. Yeah. So let's let's try her out at this community <laughs> futures office. <laughs> and so you were there and how long did you stick around there for? Oh boy. You know, it went through I went through a couple of little transitions, but stayed there overall for about five years. Um, a couple of different managers. The the manager that um, I worked with the longest there was just a wonderful mentor to me. And I think that's why maybe I stayed for all of that time that I did there. Um, also just was a great woman entrepreneur as well as manager. So I had lots of great learning lessons from her. Hmm. And did your husband follow you to the Battlefords? For a period of time, and then I followed him, just Ooh. with Current. 
Oh, you were in Speedy Creek. But you know, I actually still worked at Community Features in North Balford. I remotely worked. I was one of the first remote workers, I think, way back when. It's you, trendsetter. Yeah. You're yeah. the one that started this whole thing. Maybe. Maybe. Even then, innovate, right? Yes, exactly. So, so I must have known there was something about this Community mm -hmm. Futures program that I just wanted to stay connected to. So, yeah, we made it work. And, uh, and, and that's probably why I stayed as long as I did, just because it was such a great organization, really great mentorship. And I was learning so much as a young employee. And then what, um, what brought you to where you are today? So what took you into Weyburn, Saskatchewan? Oh, I got to follow my man around. <laughs> well, yeah. So Kevin uh, changed jobs and then we had a young family. So it just made sense um, to kind of seize opportunities. So eventually from Swift Current, moved to Weyburn, um, expanded our family. And uh, then I connected with the community futures here and um, kind of started out doing very part-time uh, work for them and then just eventually um, grew it into what I'm doing now, which is managing the office. Look at you. So there is your backstory. Cut to present day. Cut now we're here. Now we're here. <laughs> so in saying that, so I, you know, I believe, Verna, that we're all odd ducks. Um, I believe that we're all misfits. So can you tell me a time where you didn't fit in and I can be positive or negative and, and what did you ever do differently to, to stand out? So what, what kind of makes you, you, what makes you awesome? This isn't about ego. This is just about what is it that, you know, that you've done that's made you stand out, be the odd duck. Um, I think that I've been blessed with a certain amount of empathy and I really, I really um, find value in, um, seeing what makes other people tick what their needs are like I, I feel like that's kind of like a little hidden superpower is just to bring a team together of people with a lot of different skills that have um, different abilities and maybe even like different mo's mm -hmm. and um and and just hopefully create that team where there's good synergies and everybody contributes to the larger the bigger the greater good and um, really having a vision for that greater good and being able to lead in that direction. So, so I don't know if it's odd duck as much as it's fortunate duck. Well, it is still fortunate, but it was, again, I said that we're all odd ducks. Like we're all misfits. We all do things our own way. And you may see something that other people don't see. And I may see things that you don't see. And that's what makes us different. So my question back to you, what you just said, is that when you know build and building the teams and putting people's and we talked about people's mo's and 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 then you know plus there's their skill sets and all those kind of things but do you feel that um that you it's, it's going to find the right people to make the team or is it taking the team that you have and actually molding and shaping it to make it a great team i think it's a little bit of both like when you have an employee when you have someone on your work team that is a good fit um, you can you can teach hard skills pretty easily if they have the great attitude and um, some of those softer skills that fit into the environment and the organization that you would like to, um, I guess, lead and or be a part of. Um, and so that manager that I mentioned out of the North Battleford Community Futures always said, we have an environment here and people will either be attracted to it or they won't like it because it won't fit with them. And that's okay, right? So we did see in that instance, people come and go um, as teammates. And that always really stuck with me is um, to like create, so have a vision for the organization that you um, think is a really great, um, I guess, way, pathway forward. Get the buy-in from your leadership your board of directors or whomever it is, and then and then show your team that they're, they contribute to the value. And if it's a, not a good fit, they won't stay very long and that's okay, that's mm -hmm. great. And if they stay, then it means that they're a fit for that. And so, so I think you, that's powerful. Yeah, so you are the lead goose and you're getting everyone flying in the V formation. Yeah, I, but, I feel sometimes like I'm at the back of the flock. I know we've kind of talked about this before where 
I, I might be um, just seeing how everybody's doing. What do you need out of me? Maybe taking a bit of a back seat um, to let them shine a little bit as well. So, so you can lead from the back. I can lead from the back. Absolutely. That is, yeah. that, that is a skill. <laughs> and I have one, I have one more question for you before I move on to my next question, but just when you, well, the first thing that you said was what makes you unique and what makes you the odd duck is you said you have a lot of empathy. That's the first yeah. thing you said. Mm -hmm. um, and now, do you think that that's something that you have grown into over time? Do you think that it's something that maybe you either learned from your from your mom or something was a learned behavior from your past at all, or your, your dad, maybe some humble beginnings? Where do you think that that stems from? Oh, that's a great question. I think it's evolved as I've grown older. So I think sometimes just with when there's an issue or problem and um, it's difficult to get past that conflict. It kind of helps if you can put yourself in the other person's see, um, position and just see where they're coming from. So I think I learned that pretty early on, maybe even into my first teen years, um, being in customer service, seeing that there's other, there's other ways to look at situations. There's other, other um, people have needs, right? So what's the need that they have? How do you how do you um, attempt to assist them in getting what it is that they need out of the situation while still kind of getting to the end goal? So um, I think it's just you know I'm a mom as well. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of management skills that you okay. develop as a mom, to be quite honest, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're managing you're managing some really interesting team members in that environment. So, so you can put yourself into their place as well. There's just more success I find that happens um, by doing that. Hmm. Um, and, and I'm just gonna ask the question again. I'm not, I'm not, trying, to, I'm not trying to fish here, but it's, it's something, a, a pattern that I've seen and in doing, in doing my podcast. But, um, did, you know, again, saying that, did that empathy come maybe from your humble beginnings of just being in us, in a small town community, learning, learning, like say from your mom or from your dad, um, was that something that was sort of, you know, even going back to when you were a kid in, in public school, were you that kid who always sort of made sure you paid attention to the people around you, or did you do this, some of the same things then that you're doing now? I don't know that I really recognize that from my really early formative years. Um, maybe within the family unit, I was a little more empathetic and understanding and seeing all sides of that family unit. Mm -hmm. But I really do um, think it happened maybe towards just my interaction with others, with a, with a greater community rather than my smaller community. And I remember again, that great manager that I had that was my mentor said, Verna, you are not the center of the universe. <laughs> and I was she didn't say it in a terrible way. She, when she said it to me, it was almost like she was giving me the freedom not to be the center of the universe. Like other people have needs and expectations and different sides of um, points of view. So you're not the center of the universe. Step out of your own way. Ah, that's freeing in a lot of ways, right? Mm -hmm. it, can, it really can be. Absolutely. That's actually very sage advice. Yeah. Yes. I know. I believe it. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. All right. Then you answer my question. So, okay. So can you tell me about a time when someone did something for you that made an impact on your life? Well, absolutely. I'm sure I could probably come up with something from every day, to be quite honest. Pick, um, pick one. What, comes, pick what one. comes to mind right now? What comes yeah, to mind? Okay. okay. Um, well, let's go back to my parents then. My dad um, is a real inventive person. I think he's the ultimate entrepreneur, but maybe doesn't have the follow through uh, in the business sense, but he's really entrepreneurial. So that whole lessons learned from my dad about um, brainstorming, coming up with ideas, um, not being afraid to fail if that's what happens. Things don't always work out the first time. I think that was kind of a great gift that um, that was given to me through that, through that, um, you know, just seeing him be very inventive and successful sometimes. And sometimes they were just wacky ideas that didn't really pan out. <laughs> you never have any of those. 
<laughs> you're right. <laughs> I have none of those ever. <laughs> um, but but I think it's it's great to understand that, um, especially the failed ideas mm. teach you a lot. To be quite honest, so you're going to have some home runs. You're going to have some strikeouts, and and that's life. I think. Yeah, and uh, and it's interesting because I was talking to somebody uh, just recently because I was creating a project, and I said that's you know, and I think some of these things also happen as you age. But I said, you know, isn't it great when you can fail forward? Oh yeah. You know? and it's exactly what it was. It was just, it was it was trying something out and it failed, but from that you learned something from it and tried something again and it failed, and then you learned from that. So you're actually failing forward. Like that's where you remember you remember the, the lessons learned way more than if you s- succeed all the time. Mm-hmm. You remember uh, and integrate that in a positive way, I guess I should say, right? Right. Yeah, you're just flipping it from a negative into a positive. It's mm-hmm. just, it's just a learning experience. Mm-hmm. Um, are your parents still around? Yes. Yeah, they still are. They actually still are on that same acreage. Same acreage. And yeah. is your and is your dad still innovating and oh, creating yes. things and just has not stopped? Oh, he's just, he's a powerhouse, that guy. Yeah, he still, he still has great ideas. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's wonderful news. Okay, so um, so here we go. Here's the meat and potatoes of the podcast. So what are you doing presently right now to better the pond? And we had jumped into this a bit earlier, but this is going to be, you know, I will do my best to try to shut up and, and uh, you can showcase all the wonderful things that either you yourself are doing to better the pond or with community futures as well. So two part question, what are you doing Mm -hmm. presently right now to better the pond? And why are you doing it? Here's my two questions. Okay, you gave me a two part question. So you're gonna rely on me to remember this question for the entire answer I'm gonna give you. So you might have to pull me back, Erna, back, come back to the question. Um, So right now with our community future office, we've been um, in a region that's been impacted by the transition away from coal fire power by the federal government. So, Mm -hmm. so because of that, there has been some, um, you know, some ripple effects in our region economically. And of course the shock and awe of some of those, um, um, the implication of some of that moving away from coal fire power, um, that's not shock and awe anymore, but now we've been given the opportunity to access some funding to, Um, find some different ways that work within our region to help entrepreneurs and our municipalities um, position themselves now that this is our reality. So what are you going to do now that maybe um, we have a a coal mine and SAS Power has a coal-fired power plant, a couple of them in our region. So now what are you going to do that things are going to change? So we um, have applied for funding and we actually received funding to do a couple of really interesting things. The first is we expanded our programming to include regional economic development, where we had done a bit of economic development in the past as a community futures, but because of um, budgetary constraints, we weren't really able to um, have that as a, you know, a full portfolio in our region to help municipalities get ready for investment or to help municipalities and towns and villages really understand what their businesses need in order to stay on Main Street and thrive. Um, So we were really lucky we were able to hire somebody and that has been instrumental um, to have a economic development practitioner within our team who she's very learned, that's her background, so we've been just, I've been at the back of that V just flapping away and just <laughs> learning at the same time as leading, right? Um, and so from that portfolio, we have moved into understanding that some of our businesses have the capacity to be destination businesses in our region. And right now, there's a lot of talk and movement on the visitor economy. Let's let's find ways to um you know, have tourism develop within our own province, within our own regions, within our own communities. So we're tapping into some of those types of ideas to help these businesses become destination businesses and pull people into our region because visitors or tourists will actually spend more per transaction than those that live right here, right? Because, you know, you can come back 10 times over to the same awesome ice cream shop, but someone who's from about three hours away, well, you got one 
shot at it, you better eat that <laughs> ice cream better, if you're going to do it. Better load it up. Better load her up. Where's the cooler? So um, can, can you um, sort of catch off there? But um, I'm, you, I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. Um, mm -hmm. So can you give me some examples of some of the businesses in your region who will become a destination business? Yeah, and they may already be destination businesses, but we're just integrating some learning uh, programs and some networking opportunities and some ways to connect with us a little more um, in an ongoing method so that they can really solidify those learnings. So I mentioned the ice cream shop. So there's a great ice cream store in our region that just started up this past year called called uh, Cone Artisan Ice Cream. It's Cone? an artisan, Cone Artisan Ice Cream. Artisan Ice Cream. So you got it. It's Artisan Ice Cream. So it's specialty ice cream that is made from a recipe from generations ago. And um, the person who is, um, it, you know, opening this business has learned how to make ice cream, actually went to, um, I believe it was university, or took a course on how to actually make great ice cream. Has this fantastic um, ice cream recipe that has again, generations old, and a great vision for being a destination. So that's one business that yeah. um, it has been connected to that bus destination business program that we're, we're really trying to ramp up in the region. And there's many stories like that. We yeah. have, you know, um, it could be restaurants, it could be um, accommodations, might be real tourist types of um, um, businesses where it's ecotourism, or it could be someone who does outfitting. So there's lots of different types of businesses that could be destinations. And uh, we're just trying to provide some of those learning materials and experiences so that they can understand how they can even kind of like amp up their presence and pull people in. One of the people that I had on my, we have to give her a shout out because she is from Weyburn, uh, Joe Beach from uh, Cedar and Vine. Yes, um, was, yes. And uh, they've done so much work in helping with, with rebuild a building there and, and then, of course, the work that they're doing with clothing and whatnot. So um, it's so nice to see, though, that kind of economic development occurring um, in, in smaller centers of Saskatchewan because, um, I mean, as, yeah, with, with the whole coal piece and all those kind of things, like the, the, the landscape is changing. And uh, it's so nice to see that you guys are up front and center um, and really help these entrepreneurs thrive and, and make it through the transition. I think you just kind of hit the nail on the head. You have to actually talk to the, to the business owner. You need to find out, like, how are things going for you? What are your needs? Um, what, you know, what are the challenges? What are the opportunities? I think that that's maybe one of the biggest keys to economic development is really um, talking with your business owners in your region. And talking with your municipal leaders and just and helping them understand the key components to making a great place for businesses to develop and stay, right? Like we mm -hmm. can't always be looking for investment attraction. We should be supporting as well the businesses that are currently making uh, your downtown thrive. Let's mm -hmm. support those guys too, right? So, mm -hmm. so, that, so that's one of the things that we're doing is um, economic development supports destination business supports. And um, we're also, as I had mentioned uh, before, really looking to help entrepreneurs if they want to get their digital presence um, lined up and en enhanced, working with them to do that. So building it, not doing it for them, building it and then showing them how they can maintain it. Right. Because right? that's maintain it and use it effectively. Because that's the name of the game. When we were speaking before, I mean, when you brought that up, it was it was really fascinating to me, and it was it was it just kind of blew my mind in a way because back in the day, if you wanted to have any sort of marketing, branding, um, website, d digital presence, right, is that you would go to a marketing firm and you would pay outrageous amounts of money to get all this work done and then you would never have you would never learn anything about it you you would just say here's what I want it to look like and they would do all the work and it was really it was really difficult especially for a small business to outlay that kind of cash flow to to just have just have a digital presence mm -hmm. and and here you are coming and saying hey 
we're going to help you we're going to support you and we're going to teach you and we're going to and we're going to hold your hand along the way that is such a game changer i mean that mm -hmm. like you you're you're being disruptors in that industry um and you know the the really important thing is as well some entrepreneurs will find out that it's a successful um evolution of their business model to incorporate this e-commerce but they don't want to maintain it themselves. So there still is that place for those uh, service providers that are businesses that make their living out of website design and branding and marketing. And so we're kind of like a feeder program into that if that business owner wants to continue on that route, if they don't want to do it themselves. And some don't, right? Mm, yeah. um, so, so that it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, and I know a lot of entrepreneurs as you know, when you're a solo, a solo printer, which is you're all by yourself, you have so many hats and marketing is one of them because the budget might not be there to outsource it. And right. so that's where um, helping these entrepreneurs to learn the best way to manage that online presence, as well as kind of make best use of their time, because we know there's so many different jobs to do in a work day for an entrepreneur. Uh, we can't make it complicated. We got to simplify it, which is music to my ears. I love simplifying things. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's fantastic. I, I um, just for, for business to have that place to go. Um, I can tell you when I started off, I, I didn't have, I had to figure it out as I went, there was no one, there was no one around to feed me. So that is, um, that, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And you know, we, we did model that go digital SaaS program um, after one that was developed in Edmonton. So uh, we're not above kind of using what's there if it works already. Why reinvent the wheel? And I think that's a great um, lesson learned for everyone else out there is like, just, just the, do the research and see what else is out there that works really well, enhance it to implement it for your needs as well. Um, you know, some of these ideas aren't um, as much creative as they are just really strategic because mm -hmm you've done the research and you found something that already is there so you can just modify it. Absolutely, for sure. Um, all right, is there anything else you wanted to add to what you're doing to better the pond? Oh boy, you know, I think, again, I'm gonna come back to the, the people that you have. Who are the people in your neighborhood? Who are the people in, on your work team? I think, um, you know, looking at who, you surround yourself with, if you can ensure that you are surrounding yourself with people who are actually maybe better than you at certain, at a lot of the aspects of what it is that they need to do. So having qualified people who are really have great attitudes, have the same vision as you, um, are interested to better the pond just like you are. That's the gold, I think. So, and I think we have that. We have a great lender in our on staff. We have an amazing um, economic development professional. We have a great technical um, Go Digital SaaS coordinator and teammates, and a fantastic person who is our office admin as well. So, I'm I got the dream. Still living the dream. Still, still. This is this is a, this is like part two. I mean, it's just a continuation of the same story. <laughs> so, so yeah, as I said to you earlier, this is a two part question. Um, so if you were to just sit and look back and reflect, why are you doing what you're doing? I think I'm, um, I'm at the place where um, in that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I'm shooting for the top of that, that self actualization, that piece of what can you do to make a difference? And definitely um, assisting entrepreneurs with um, their opportunities, their challenges, getting, helping them to get where they would like to go. Um, that is That just feeds right into that self-actualization where you actually are uh, making a big difference. And that also comes down to, in my opinion, it also comes down to social responsibility. Right. Absolutely. It's doing yeah. something bigger than yourself and doing it for a purpose bigger than yourself. It's not about you anymore. It's, 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 it's now we're into the life of we, not me. Boy, your a job sure turns into um, a calling when, when you can make that switch, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. like it? It really does. Yeah. And you lean into it. I mean, as you said, we're kind of having this conversation a little past 
banker's hours. <laughs> and that's okay for both of us, right? Right. So, so I think that's maybe um, part of the why is like, it's, um, it's not something that's a job. It's part of all of us that are within the community future program, I can guarantee you. Um, and the, again, there are lots of community future offices. And I think all the people who are attracted to that type of work, they all, they all kind of swim in that same pond. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important. Um, you know, I once one of the things when I work with companies of trying to get them, you know, which I call is, is level five leadership, which is basically it's on the same lines to have Maslow's hierarchy. It's a little bit slightly different, but it's the same, it's the same idea, it's the same concept, right? It's just of getting people up with you know purpose and passion and mission and and social responsibility. And really, you know, when you when you're organizing um, whether it be people or helping again, it's just, it, you're, you're doing it from the, you're doing it with purpose and, and for the greater mm -hmm. good. And, and I think that just speaks volumes. I concur. Ditto. <laughs> so what do I say? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. What to, it's just, well, it's just so nice to see. That's, that's one of the reasons why you're actually on this podcast, which oh. is the basis of why, you know, what are we doing to make the world a better place? And you just said it yourself, like, this is all about helping others. And that's what this is about. So that it was basically in a roundabout way. It was a very big round of applause for you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'll take it. And, okay. you know, I think that's one, one thing that we maybe as, um, as, as human beings, we don't do enough of is celebrate some of those, some of those successes, some of those achievements, small a achievements. Mm -hmm. um, like we don't really take the time to celebrate. We're kind of, we're kind of motivated to keep on attaining goals, but I really do. I've been trying to celebrate those, those pieces uh, again with my team and with my family, uh, because that's what makes life so worthwhile. Yeah, I think that you you have to, you know, to me, it's always constantly looking backwards, even though we all want to move, we all want to look at the future. And I, I get that, but, it, but it's actually looking backwards to celebrating your milestones, right? Mm -hmm. Look how far you've come, right? And that launches you forward to the next one. You can look backwards, look how far we've come. And that is, that, that actually, that's what, that's what keeps constant growth. Yeah, I love that. That's a, that's a great way to, to incorporate that milestone piece in and, and encourage people to kind of look back and look at all the things that they've done that are just amazing. Um, again, I don't think we do enough of it. So I'm really trying in this, in this next little phase of life to really look back and go like, ah, oh, that was pretty outstanding team. Way to go. There you go. So can I challenge, can I, can I hold you accountable to that? I'm going to challenge you on that to make sure oh. that you're going to just keep looking back at your milestones, keep, keep, okay. keep creating confidence. Right? I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm holding, I'm holding, it. I'm holding your feet to the fire. Getting Sounds toasty. good. You're in a totally <laughs> different city than me. I don't know. How are you going to hold my feet to the fire? You, you just keep guessing. I'll do it. <laughs> all right. So looking back and looking forward, mm. right. And all the lessons learned along the way. I mean, could you paint me a picture of, of the golden pond and what do you, what's your golden pond? And what does the future look like? Yeah, I think, I think more of, of the same. I think I, I actually, as I had mentioned before, I'm going to take the time to really um, look at the things that are the milestones and celebrate them um, with whom, whoever is part of that, because you never do it by yourself, right? Mm -hmm. None of the right. things that we, we are part of are usually by ourselves. Um, and, and then maybe take a, a more of a look at um, what fills my bucket and do a bit more of that, right? I did mention that I, I do have a one of my keys is that I really love to ha ensure that my team can be uh, very effective and so give them what they want to, in order to succeed. But maybe you got to do a bit more of that for yourself. And in doing that, then you can shine and, and also allow your organization to kind of uh, benefit as well. So I think we'll be doing um, additional programming to expand some of the stuff that we had have just started scratching at mm -hmm. and uh, like through the community future program and um, just again, creating more synergies so that more great things can happen in this region. I'm just, just thinking about this, what you just said and, 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 you know, and look at the milestones and the things that you want to do. Um, have you, have you really reflected too on, 
how much you've helped people, especially through this last two years, through the pandemic has been hard on absolutely everyone. There's no doubt about it. Um, but have you actually celebrated the wins from how you've supported, you know, the, the businesses and the people and, and the community, even through this last, you know, through the pandemic? Yeah, and that's a great question. I think, again, in the busyness of trying to um, assist, so because like a lot of these entrepreneurs have gone through very traumatic times. Mm -hmm. So again, you're, you're um, wanting to put the focus on them and on that experience and not take away um, from, from that. But at the same time, I know that my team here at Community Futures, I, I, I think that we've done some of that where we understand the tremendous um, impact that we have assisted with through COVID supports, um, loans that have helped entrepreneurs get through this time, this past time, some of the innovative programming that has maybe just made it a little easier to make some transitions and pivots. Um, I think, again, we, we actually could do much better at celebrating some of those successes, but, um, but I think that hopefully we've gotten some of that um, I, I hope that we've communicated some of, some of that to some of our, to our board of directors and our staff as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think it's invaluable to know that you've supported, you know, so many people along the way, because yeah, it has been very traumatic for a lot of business. So, um, uh, and, there's, and I'm sure there's been a lot of learning along the way. Oh, a lot of learning. I yeah. mean, goodness, boy, you're a different person now than you were 18 months ago. Look, see, look back at your milestones. There it is yeah. right there. Okay. So here's a question that was, I do believe was not, I didn't set you up for. I mean, it's going to come out. Of, it's going to come out of left field. Okay. You ready for it? Let's hear it. Let's okay. Hear it. If you, Vern O'Neill, if you are standing on the top of a mountain and the whole world was intently listening to you, what would you say? Mm. I would say, um, Boy, that's a tough one, Warren. Why did you spring that on me? No, I wouldn't say that. That would be hard <laughs> to say that. Yeah, don't say that. So I was really hoping for something a little more inspiring. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I would say, um, you know, know your value and be kind to others. Hmm. I'm going to make a note of that. Mm -hmm. And... And, and you are going to be the only one, this is going to be like a two-part question. The only one on the podcast who gets a two-part question with this okay. question because you're so special. Um, <laughs> and, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to go back. Know your value and be kind to others. Okay, that, that is noted. Um, no, and my, the, my next question is, um, and just because of everything that you guys are doing, and if, if you, and you've also learned it along the way because you had a mentor, but if you had a, a young entrepreneur that was coming to you um, with, with an idea, they want to kind of get something going. You know, what would you think were the best piece of advice that you could possibly provide that entrepreneur? Well, that's actually an easy one. I'm glad that you ended the podcast, <laughs> podcast with an easy one. Um, really, truly plan out your business startup, plan it. Put your ideas down on paper. Not every one of your ideas is gonna be brilliant and you can change that plan 20 times before you actually step foot in, and uh, jump in to that pond. But, but truly think of some of um, the avenues of your business before you, before you take that step, because um, it's costly to start a business. It's time consuming to start a business. And often our business owners put their whole selves into business startup. So you're, your ego is on the line, your confidence, right? So um, planning it out helps your finances, helps your time management, helps you and your confidence. Um, and, and then reach out to an organization like a Community Futures to bounce ideas around. That's what I would suggest. Excellent sage advice, which is going to lead me right into my next statement, because... First of all, I want to thank you for your time and your stories today and, and, and sharing about you and sharing about Community Futures. And if anyone wants to find you, where do they go to find you or go to find Community Futures? So if they do have questions about everything that we talked about, you know, how do they go about getting that? 
Yeah, absolutely. So great question. A couple of ways. Um, Facebook and Instagram, we're at Community Future Sunrise, just Community Future Sunrise all together, or online, uh, cfsask.ca slash sunrise. cfsask.ca backslash sunrise. You got it. Yeah. All right. And what if they wanted to talk to you? Do they, is there a place to go find you or would you, or do they just have to go through community futures? Oh, I mean, we're all accessible. All of our team members, they can absolutely email me. It's uh, gm at cfsunrise.ca or phone our office um, 306-842-8803. And um, Myself or one of our other staff members are really happy to connect with entrepreneurs and, and talk through their business ideas. And from firsthand experience, I know that you guys are absolutely amazing to work with. Um, lots of fun, lots of laughs, but, but like, but, you know, you know, when, when the rubber hits the road, I mean, um, you're getting great work done and I've, I've, I've had that experience of working with you. So I, I give you high, high praise for the team that you have and that you're leading and, and the work that you're doing. Yes, I, I'll take that. I'll share it with the team. I got to tell you, there's nothing better than being able to laugh and, and have a great time at work and still get lots of great work done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot to be said for that is, you know, when you can have fun doing what you're doing, right? It just, it, it just makes, it makes just everything so much better. It's just the icing on the cake. It's the it icing is. on the, it's the icing on the pond. <laughs> it's the ice on the <laughs> pond. <laughs> Tis the season. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> All right. So there you have it, folks. We had a great time here today with Vern O'Neill from Community Futures. Uh, this is Warren Berry flocking off to take you beyond the pond to better the pond because we're better together. Thank you so much, Vern. I really, truly appreciate it. Thanks, Warren.